So there are a ton of desktop CO2 lasers that are out there and they actually have one thing in common and that is usually the glass tube, which is at the very back of the machine. But there's actually a new type of laser that is coming out that replaces the glass tube that you have in units like this with one that is made of metal. And that is on this unit right here. This is the GWIC Cloud RF. In this video, we're gonna talk about the benefits you get with a metal tube and if they are worth the extra price versus one that is made of glass. So I've actually already reviewed the glass version of this machine in the past. And you can check that out right up there. I don't actually have that unit in my shop anymore. I gave it away to a local STEM program just because I have a bunch of lasers. But this unit from Ohmtech is basically the exact same machine. It is even supplied by GWIC. At least I'm pretty sure that's how the relationship works. So for the sake of this video, these are the two machines that I am comparing. And I really wanted to do the side-by-side -side comparison so you can really decide which of these makes the most sense for you. Now, a quick disclaimer from the beginning, the folks over at G-Machine slash g -Wick, they provided me this unit for free in exchange for my honest opinion and a review. And if you do decide to pick up any of the machines from them, I am an affiliate for them, so I will get a kickback. But I do try my best to be unbiased because basically I have an affiliate relationship with pretty much all of these companies. So I definitely want to give you my opinion on which one I still think is the the best. So to start out, let's actually talk about all the features that are the same between these units. So the work area is going to be the same. You're going to get about 38 by 22 by 9 inches. And GWIC actually provides some stock that is like this. And this is actually becoming pretty standard. And specifically with the G-Machine brand machines, most of the material is going to have this barcode on it. And that barcode can be read by the cameras that are on board both of these machines. So you're going to have the nice camera features on both of them so it can auto detect what material you're using and then it can adjust the Z height as a result. And speaking of the Z axis, that does have a motor on it, so it's not something manually you have to adjust. With the larger Ohmtech units, which I'm trying to see if you can see, there's one actually back there in the back. You actually have to manually adjust the Z bed and it drops it up and down. With these, you just type in the material thickness and then the software will auto adjust that bed for you. One thing I don't like that these guys do is advertise this as autofocus because usually that means it can actually figure out whatever the thickness is of the material with a camera or some other sensor and then auto adjust it as a result. Instead what they really mean is the camera can see what material you've got on there if it's using that barcode and then through the software it can adjust it as a result. Now you definitely can use materials that aren't from them but you're just going to have to measure the thickness and then adjust it. Overall, the builds are basically the same. They take the exact same footprint. This one is a tad bit heavier. It actually has to do with the metal assembly for the laser, but both the machines actually have pass-through slots, so you can put in material that might be bigger than the laser itself. On the exhaust side of things, it's got a duct on the back with an exhaust fan that is built internal. A lot of these manufacturers are actually starting to give you this inline fan, which actually I haven't even taken out of the package yet. And this helps with the airflow because it's going to suck it out and then push it out wherever you have this exhausted. And on the connection side of things, they're going to be exactly the same. You're going to have Wi-Fi, you're going to have USB, and you're going to have Ethernet. Specifically with the G-Machine units, they allow you to use their software, which is both cloud-based as well as giving you the ability to run it actually local. And a fairly recent update they've actually made to their machines is they now actually support Lightburn, which is my biggest drawback from my initial review of the Glass 2 version of this machine. So Lightburn is pretty much what I use to run all of my lasers. And when you guys see these test files here in a second, I have made all of those through Lightburn. And speaking of those test files, if you ever want to use them yourself, I actually have a link down in the description where you can grab them. On the safety side of things, it has pretty much your standard suite of features. And the big one specifically is if this lid raises up while this is running, it's automatically going to disconnect the laser. And actually, in fact, if you have this pulled out, it is also going to disconnect the laser. Now, if you are one to use this as a pass-through, there are some ways that you can disable that so this can keep running if you have material where you're having to use the pass-through as a result. And I'm actually going to turn this guy on. And with it on, you can see the lights they have built internally. And the mic probably is picking up some of it. Now, I've actually probably removed some of the noise from this, but these aren't the most quiet, especially if you have a fan attached to them. So just know they're not going to be silent while you're using them, but you can definitely do work and talk to people when they're up and running. Now, both of these units also have compressors built in, so you've got your air assist coming out the nozzle of the laser. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the differences. And the big main difference is the fact that this is an RF laser, which gives you this metal assembly in the back for the laser. RF actually stands for radio frequency, which has to do with how the laser is actually generated. So the easiest way to think about this is really on an electric current side of things. So with a glass tube, you're gonna have a direct current, meaning that the pulse of the laser is going to be pretty slow versus a radio frequency laser, which has an alternating current. And as a result, it allows the laser to pulse faster. Now there are some performance benefits of a AC system versus a DC, which we'll talk about here in a second. Probably the biggest difference has to do with how they are actually assembled. Like we've been talking about, this uses a glass tube versus this metal housing slash assembly on a RF laser. Specifically with these two units, you're looking at 50 watts for the glass tube version and then 35 watts for the RF version. Okay, so what does all of that actually mean practically? So for an RF system, I'm seeing five big advantages and then one disadvantage. On the advantage side of things, the first has to do with durability. Just really that metal is a lot stronger than glass. I recently actually just moved into the shop space. I had to be pretty careful moving all of my CO2 glass tube lasers because I'm always worried I'm going to jostle those around and then actually break the glass tube. I was definitely not as worried with this machine just because it's more robust and it's easier to handle. Now the second advantage has to do with the lifespan. Now when you're buying one of these units, you definitely want to think about the laser tube or the laser system as kind of something that's going to be a consumable, something they're going to have to replace down the line. Now on the website, they have a lifespan for the RF machine at 20,000 hours versus 10,000 hours for a class two. Now I did some digging online and I usually see numbers that are a lot less than that. In fact, with a glass tube, I see a lot of people usually saying about two to 4,500 hours versus an RF tube at eight to 10,000 hours. Hours. And an easy way to think about those hours, if you have one of these units working 40 hours a week, so like working for you full time, you're looking at one to three years before you're gonna have to replace the tube versus three to six years for an RF unit. Now, another benefit of an RF system is going to be a smaller laser dot. They're claiming this is going to be at 0.07 millimeters versus 0.25 millimeters for your glass tube. And I did some engraving tests and you can kind of see some of the results right here. And I can definitely tell it looks a little bit crisper, but really it's not a massive, massive difference. Honestly, a lot of times I'm going to lose detail just because of the type of material I'm using. Maybe I don't have the focus completely dialed in. So I don't know how often I'm actually going to get all the way dialed into that 0.07 millimeter laser dot. So I really wouldn't lean on that as your primary reason for picking up one of these. Now, one benefit I have seen is you can actually run this at a higher speed. In fact, they actually have some stronger stepper motors in here because the max speed on this unit is 30 1300 millimeters per second versus this guy, which is at 600 millimeters per second. And the reason for that comes back to the AC versus the DC current. Since this can pulse much faster, you can actually run it quicker and it still is going to give you an engraving or a cutting effect. Now I actually did an engraving comparison between the glass and the RF. And so on the glass side of things, it was at 600 millimeters per second and then 30% power. And then when I ramped it up to a thousand millimeters per second, it was at 50% power. Now it's kind of hard to do a direct comparison between the two just because the power isn't the same, but I do know even running this at a thousand millimeters per second, I was getting a really nice result. And specifically this is on MDF. Now the last benefit of an RF system is the fact that it doesn't need a water cooling system. So recently with these glass desktop units, they actually are putting the reservoir inside of the laser itself, which is really handy. With the bigger industrial style machines, you'll have separate reservoirs like off to the side where then it's pumping through the machine. And the reason for that is because it pumps the laser around that glass tube to keep it cool and not cracking. Versus an RF system, which is completely air cooled, meaning you don't need any type of water reservoir as a result. You can actually see the fans on the back of the unit that are going directly into that metal assembly. So those are the advantages. Let's talk about the one disadvantage, and I'm sure you've probably already guessed it, and it has to do with the cost. So at the time of this recording, if you get the pro version of the G machine, but it's still glass, that's gonna be about $3,800. But then if you get the exact same machine with the RF version, you're looking at $4,800. Now here are some cutting and engraving tests from this machine. And really there's not gonna be a huge difference in terms of performance. You obviously will have more power, but the smaller laser dot on this unit means the lower wattage is going to go further. But the main difference I found between using both of these is just the fact that you can run this 
faster. So especially if you're doing lighter engravings where you don't need a ton of power, being able to crank this up because you've got that alternating current is super handy. But probably the biggest benefit is going to be that lifespan. So this is going to last twice as long as this. But another thing also to kind of throw a wrench into it is the cost to replace these units are also more expensive. Sometimes they can be three to even five times more the cost of glass. So what I would recommend is just do the math for yourself. Take the base cost of these units, the cost to change out the glass or the metal and kind of see what your workload's gonna be. And if it's something where you're really gonna have to be replacing these lasers a ton, the glass option might still be the best for you. Now, all that being said, with all of these lasers, we definitely have seen the prices coming down and down. I mean, just a straight up glass CO2 machine was tens of thousands of dollars just a few years ago. And those prices have come way down, even in just the past couple of years. I definitely can see the RF side of things coming down as well. Now, this might actually be your first time looking at a laser engraver or a laser cutter. If you want just a big overview of all the different options that are out there and what might work best for you, I definitely encourage you guys to check out this overview. And we're going to jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.